Hello Hunters, welcome back to my channel, Peppu here. The Sunbreak expansion will finally drop tomorrow for PlayStation and Xbox. So this is an excellent opportunity for me to release the continuation of my Monster Hunter Rise walkthrough. I'll leave in the description the first and second parts, which respectively talk about low rank and high rank. Therefore, this guide will start exactly from the end of part 2, which is immediately after you defeated Thunder Serpent Narwa. However, for all the players who farm the Rise Endgame and thus all the Apex monsters and event quests, you will be more advantage at the beginning of Master Rank since you are probably going to have a higher rank Endgame build that will make you stronger, but most importantly, tanker. And having a good defense is pretty helpful for the Master Rank, as the jump from the high rank is quite big. Before starting the video, let me warn you that in this walkthrough I will talk about the new monsters introduced in Sunbreak as most of them will be in the urgent quest, and so I can't skip them. Regarding the final boss, I will put a spoiler warning when that part will start. That said, let's start with the walkthrough! First of all, an important note. Make sure to craft the Power Talon and Armor Talon after you fight Ibushi in the high rank, if you haven't done so yet. And put them together in your pouch alongside the Armor Charm and the Armor Talon to increase your defense and attack. Well then, after you kill Narwa, you will unlock the urgent quest to reach the Master Rank. You will have to fight a Daimyo Hermitaur, which is not particularly hard, but since it's already Master Rank, you should be careful as its attacks can be pretty powerful, especially when enraged, since you are still wearing high rank armor. A good tip I can give you is to use a Thunder Longsword. In particular, if you haven't fought Narwa the Old Mother yet, you can use the Nogre Longsword with the Anti-Aquatic Species Rampage skill. In addition, you can also slot in some bolt jewels to further increase your thunder attack. Daimyo is particularly weak to thunder, so you should take advantage of that. Oh right, I almost forgot. You need to break its shell twice to get the time-worn crimson horn, a material you need to craft some important armor piece, so make sure to break the horn behind its shell to obtain it in the rewards. There is one more important piece of information I want to give you. This quest is already Master Rank, which means if you go looking around you are going to find new materials which will get in handy later when you have to forge the Master Rank equipment, thus you should certainly gather a few of them when you have the chance. After completing the urgent quest, Fiorain will conduct you to Elgato, the new Master Rank outpost. Make sure to roam around to discover where the facilities are and get used to their new positions. Not to mention there is the Kuhut Nest on top of this town wall. Don't forget to come and gather every once in a while. A radical change for the weapons in Master Rank is the new augmenting system. In Rise you could add rampage skills by using Defender Tickets, while in Master Rank all the weapons will lose this feature but in exchange you will be able to craft rampage decorations to slot in exclusively on the weapon. These special decorations can either be level 1, 2 or 3 and you will unlock more of them the farther you progress into the game. As said earlier, these decorations can only be put on the weapon, specifically in the rampage slot that every Master Rank weapon will have. The most important rampage decorations are level 2, such as Anti-Wyvern or Fanged Exploit Jewels which boost your raw part of the damage by 5% against that type of monsters. As a consequence, a weapon with a level 2 rampage slot or higher should be preferred most of the time later in Master Rank, when you can craft these decos since you can gain an important damage boost against those specific monsters. You will also unlock level 4 decorations, even though there are not many useful jewels at the very start of the Master Rank, so you shouldn't bother that much. What you should care about instead is the new feature of the Argosy that lets your buddies make backroom deals and bring you items that will become incredibly helpful for the talisman melding later in the game, so make sure to check the Argosy every now and then. Before continuing with the Master Rank quest, you have to talk to Arlo and Uzushi to take a short lesson about the new switch skill swap system introduced in Sunbreak. At the same time, you will unlock a new switch skill for all the weapons. In the case of Longsword, it's the Sacred Sheath combo, which will substitute the Special Sheath combo in the third slot of your Switch Skill scroll. This new Switch Skill will play an important role for the most part of your future gameplay, so make sure to get used to it as soon as you can. I explain the basics of the most important Switch Skills and in general how to play Longsword in Sunbreak in another video, so make sure to check it out if you're curious about this new playstyle. In Sunbreak there is also another big change related to the food, the Hopping Skewers. You can now choose to eat your favorite dangos at different levels. The first dango in your loadout will get to level 4, the second at level 3, and the last one at level 1. Depending on both the level and the dango type, you'll get a certain activation chance. The higher the level, the lower this chance. 
In Rise, the Dango you ate were all at level 2, but now you can increase the effects of the first two Dango and decrease the effect of the last one by using the Hopping Skewers. On top of that, you can use a Dango ticket to further increase the chance of activation. If you have a good number of these tickets, then definitely try the Hopping Skewers. In general, I suggest you eat for Dango Weakness at level 4, Dango Moxie at level 3, and Dango Booster at level 1. Another new important feature is the Body Recon. You can send one body to each map, and use it to fast travel once per quest. It is a really nice addition, and it will come in handy many times. So make sure to send your buddies to each map by selecting between two recon points. In case you see only one, it means you have to unlock the second one. And to do that, you just need to go into that map and find the location yourself. The first Master Rank quest you should complete is Bagging Out. I would recommend bringing some poison smoke bombs to be able to carve some hornet towers and get extra materials. In fact, such materials will be used to craft our first Master Rank Longsword. During this quest, you should also unlock the second camp, and then you might even want to unlock the two body recon points. Once back to Elgato, you should have all the materials required to craft the Black Katana. In case you don't, try to upgrade it from the Bone Tree. You require fewer materials, so it should be easier this way. This longsword is the strongest early master rank longsword among the easiest ones to craft right at the start. It has natural white sharpness, 230 attack, and 5% affinity. The only true weak point of this longsword is a rampage slot, as it is just at level 1, so we can't use any of the anti spacious jewels I talked about earlier. The only rampage decorations which make sense to use in that level 1 slot is a small monster jewel which boosts your damage by 50% on all the small monsters. It will probably come in handy since we kinda need some small monster materials. Moving on, next is the armor. For early master rank I recommend the Hunter X Helm. The prize belt can be obtained from Manteca or Kelby, while the twisted stiff bone in the shrine ruins from the bone piles. For the chest I would craft the Kamura Legacy Garb, which requires Elvalite ore which can easily be found in all the master rank maps and the heavy Hidzuchi belt, which can be obtained by carving the small monsters Hidzuchi in the shrine ruins. As for the arms, I would keep the high rank burial, we don't have any better choice yet, and just one high rank armor piece will not penalize us that much anyway. For the coil we use the Hermit Tower. You just need to hunt the Daimyo and get the materials, and don't forget to break the horn on its shell if you want to get the time-worn Crimson Horn. Lastly, we use the Hunter Greaves Axe which again requires a prize belt and a twisted stiff bone, the same as the helm. To easily get all these materials, we can either do the key quest of the double Arzuros or, what I would recommend, the Great Itzuchi side quest. We will need some Great Itzuchi's materials in the future anyway, so better to fight him now. Once you get all the materials and craft the new Mastering Armor, it's time to use some decorations to further improve our early Mastering build. You need one Warback Jewel to reach Warback Whisperer level 3, one of the most important skills after Capcom nerfed the Longsword by increasing the Helmbreaker's cooldown by 60%. Moreover, since Helmbreaker's damage got also nerfed and the Sacred Sheet combo has been added, Sakura Slash is much more frequently used and thus we absolutely need a way to reduce the cooldown of the Warbucks. All these nerfed were already included in the console version of release at the beginning of this year in Rise. Warbug Whisperer is the only skill that can reduce the Warbug cooldown at this point of the game. But during quests, don't forget you can pick the gold or ruby warbucks scattered on the map, and reduce the cooldown even farther. Warbug Whisperer is a 20% boost, while the gold or ruby warbug gives a 15% reduction on the cooldown. Of course, they stack, so the total reduction is about 38%, which is extremely good. As for the other slots, we want to get weakness exploit to level 3, so we need 3 tenderized jewels. In the last level 2 slot, we can use an Expert Jewel to increase Critical Eye to level 3. In the level 1 slots, I would personally use Grinder Jewels. Lastly, if you have some good charms, I would use a Critical Eye Charm or a Critical Draw one. This is the build we can get right at the very start of the Master Rank. Don't forget to upgrade the armor to further increase your defense. The two key quests I recommend completing are Kuluyaku and Royal Ludro. Slaying these two monsters, in fact, will unlock the anti-aquatic and anti-aerial rampage decorations. Later in the Master Rank, we will make use of these jewels, so it's a wise choice to craft them right away. Once you complete two key quests, the Tetranodon Urgent quest will be unlocked, and completing this quest will further unlock more Master Rank 1 quests. On top of that, a new feature will also be available for your Palico, the secret support moves. 
To unlock them, you need to complete the request, which asks you to complete 3 Master and Quests with a Palico type to unlock that specific secret support move. Do it for all 5 types of Palico, and you will get all of them. I personally recommend using the healing lower bat. To further progress into the Master rank, I would suggest you complete the Baroth and the Lagombi plus Great Baggy quests. Later we will need these monsters materials, plus in this way it's one key quest in the Frost Islands and one in the Sandy Plains, so that you can gather the exclusive ores and bones you can get only in those maps. With the Frostium you can craft the Aloy Vembraces X, increasing your defense if you want. After completing the other two key quests, you will finally get the urgent quest to reach Master Rank 2. This time you have to hunt the new subspecies of Pishaten, the Blood Orange Pishaten. This time around Fiorain will join you in this hunt, so you have a bit of an advantage. This monster has many different moves compared to the regular Pishaten, and the explosive pine cones are a pain in the ass to deal with, but in exchange its head and tail are really weak, so make sure to target them as soon as you get an opening. Completing the Urgent quest will promote you to Master Rank 2, and you will have access to the Master Rank 2 quest. You will also unlock a way to increase the skill memory of your buddies, being able to make them learn more skills at the same time. You will have to use one Eureka Corn to unlock one new memory slot, for a max number of 3. Another new feature you just unlock when reaching Master Rank 2 is the Meow Sonaris at Master Rank. You can finally dispatch your buddies to Master Rank locations. I highly recommend using the Meow Sonaris regularly, as they could bring back important materials, such as the heavy humble scrap that will be extremely helpful later in the game to craft really strong body weapons. On top of that, sending them to the sandy plains will give you a chance to obtain the sinister gloom cloth, which is required to craft a really powerful longsword at this point of the game. Lastly, with Master Rank 2 you will also unlock the new follower collab quest. These are divided into follower quests and support surveys. By completing them you will deepen your bond with the follower who will accompany you in the quest. From now on you will be able to bring a follower with you during Master Rank quest. A new voice under this window will let you choose if you want to bring followers along or not. My recommendation is to use them in case you are planning to play solo, since the quest's difficulty will not increase nor the monster's HP will, so bringing followers will always result in an advantage. And that's why the first quest you should take on is the follower quest with Luchika, Fruit vs Firearms. The quest takes place in the Flood Forest, so make sure to collect the exclusive ores you can find only there, which are Meltspar and Pure Crystal. Luchika is one of the best followers, her support with the heavy bowgun is excellent and she deals quite the damage as well. Once you complete this follower quest you will unlock Luchika as a follower alongside Fiorain. With Meltspar and Pure Crystal we can craft one of the strongest armor pieces even in the late master rank, I'm talking about the Ingot Greaves Axe. Saffiron ore can be obtained in the jungle, while the monster Toughbone is dropped by several master rank monsters like Baroth, Raffian or Somnacant. Remember to upgrade your armor every time you reach a higher master rank. Also, don't forget to change decorations or the talisman to always have quick shit at level 3 when you equip new armor pieces. By getting pure crystal, you can also forge or upgrade the ice bloom from the ice tree, which doesn't have white sharpness but it has 2500 attack and most importantly it has that level 3 rampage slot, so we can finally make use of the anti-species jewels. Such jewels boost the raw part of your damage by 5% which is pretty nice. If you don't know which jewel you have to put on your weapon when you fight specific monsters, here's an image with all the monsters in the game and which anti-species jewel works against them. Credits to Gaudium, make sure to check her on Twitter, link in the description. The first key quest for Master Rank 2 I suggest you complete is Somnacant. We will need the Somna Dream Powder later in the game to craft the best sleep weapons for our buddies, while Somnacant Wild Fiend is required to craft the Devil's Slicer Plus which might be helpful for some of the monsters in Master Rank 2 weak to thunder. The gold light ore can be found in the sandy plains. The second key quest I would recommend completing is Kedzu. Its mystic fangs are required to craft the longsword from the dead stand tree, which at this point of the game is pretty strong with an attack value of 2500, 34 dragon, 2 slots level 2 and 1 rampage slot at level 2. This weapon is perfect against dragon weak monsters like Rathian. And exactly the quest I would suggest you do is the Rathian. Its longsword has the same row as the other longswords I mentioned before, but instead of having element, it has poison and good slots. So it's a good alternative you can use on all monster types. The Dragonbone artifact can be found in all the master rank maps. Completing two key quests will unlock the Urgent quest, which is Anjana this time around. After it, the second set of master rank 2 quests will be unlocked, 
Something important you might want to do right away is accept the request from getting the researcher at the command post. After you deliver two steel gajal whiskers, you will unlock the Palamute Silk Binder, which is a really strong Palamute gear you should definitely try. There is also a particular side quest you will unlock at this point of the game by talking to the guy at the pier, a dangerous dare. Completing this quest will unlock Yukumo's armor, whose head is good with critical eye 2 and 1 slot level 2. It increases your defense and it also looks cool. If you played Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, you know you want to get this armor. <laughs> Regarding the key quest, I recommend hunting Juratodus, as its longsword, even though it has minus 10% affinity, is actually pretty strong with a 2700 attack value and good slots. The eroded Elder Skeleton can be found only in the Sandy Plains. If you haven't crafted the Raffian longsword yet, you can do the key quest Shrine Ruined. Otherwise, Toby Kadachi is what I would hunt instead. Anyway, after completing two key quests, you will unlock the urgent quest to reach Master Rank 3. And this time you have to face the new monster, Garangol. You can either use the Raffian Longsword or the Devil Slicer Plus. And don't forget to use the Fanged Exploit Jewel in the Rampage slot. This quest will take place in the Citadel, a new Master Rank map. My recommendation is to take some time to explore it, gather new exclusive materials and unlock the subcamp and the two body recon points. About the fight, remember that Garangol in his normal state doesn't have good weaknesses, but as soon as he gets enraged, he will transform its arms which will become its weak point. Deal enough damage to them and you will get a topple. Don't forget to use endemic life like the Blast Toad and the Mad Beetle to get big advantages during the fight. Completing this urgent quest will unlock the Master Rank Tree quest and by talking to Nagi you will get a new request. Deliver these materials and you will unlock a new feature at the Body Dojo. You can now choose the second support move in the list for all the Palicos you currently have. If you gather it enough Centuria Ore in the Citadel, you will also be able to craft two strong longswords right away, the Camera Warrior Rapier Plus and the True Devil Slicer. With this last one, you won't have any issue in slaying Shogun Senator, whose clothes are needed both for the request and for its longsword. In fact, after completing this key quest, you should try to craft the Senator Cutter, which is one of the strongest longsword during Master Rank 3. Sinatar shells can be carved from the small monster Sinatars. On top of that, the Sinatar helm is really good so it would be great to craft that as well. While for the chest and the arms, we want to craft Barioth armor. You can do the Master Rank 3 key quest and the follower quest to hunt this monster. Don't forget to use the gold warbug while wyvern riding to get the max number of 6 shiny drops. In this way, you will get tons of extra materials. With the addition of these armor pieces, my set looks like this. Here you can see the skills, the decorations and the charm I'm using. As for the last quest, I would recommend hunting Almudron so that you can craft the Valtos Love, a really powerful longsword we will further upgrade at some point in the future. Completing 3 key quests will unlock the Urgent Quest, which is not other than the new salt speeches of Somnacant. The Aurora Somnacant. I'll be honest with you guys, this is one of the worst fights, in my opinion. I really don't like fighting this monster with longsword. The fight is actually pretty different from the normal Somnacant, in a worse way, and it's hard to exploit the openings. I don't have specific tips for this fight. The only weakness is the head or the neck. In general, it doesn't have any high elemental weakness, so I just use Shogun Longsword and aim at the weak spot. Alright, oh don't forget to use either the anti-aquatic or the anti-dragon jewel on your weapon, good luck with that. After completing the urgent quest, you will unlock the rest of the Master Rank 3 quest. The first key quest you should complete is the Magnum Alo. Its longsword is among the best ones in Master Rank 3, with white sharpness, 2800 attack and 28 blast, and it's not even hard to craft as you don't need any rare materials. Rakna Kadaki and Nargakuga are the only monsters left we haven't fought yet in Master Rank 3, so the following two key quests should cover them. After completing three key quests, you will unlock the urgent quest to get to Master Rank 4, Lunageron. The fight of this new monster of Sunbreak is really cool. In its normal state, he doesn't have real weaknesses. While when he is covered in its icy armor, he takes more damage, and even more when he is also enraged. However, in this first state, he is extremely dangerous, so if you really want to punish him, you will need to learn its pattern and exploit the few openings you get to counterattack. Don't forget to use the anti-dragon jewel on your weapon for this fight. If you complete the urgent quest, you will unlock the must rank 4 quest. Moreover, the Meow scenarios will now be available to send to the Citadel. The very first quest you should consider completing is Shogun and Raffian. This quest takes place in the Lava Caverns, 
So as always, when we go to discover a new Master Rank map, make sure to unlock the Body Recon Point and gather all the exclusive materials of this locale, including the Old Fire Stone, which will be necessary to craft the Cinetar Cutter Plus. This is one of the strongest longswords for this Master Rank, so be sure to get it as soon as you can. The Heavy Wyvern Sculpt is obtained in the rewards when you break the shell on the back of Shogun Cinetar. As for the armor, we want to complete the request from Arlo to unlock the Utsushi True Hidden, which consists of just capturing a Master Rank Magna Model. Do that and you will be able to craft the Coil, which is really good, while the Lunagorn armor will replace our Cinetar Helm. It won't be easy to get that Frost Jewel, but this helm is truly one of the most powerful even later in Master Rank. So even if you have to farm some Lunagaron to get it, it won't be a waste of time. Anyway, for the moment, this is the build I'm using at Master Rank 4. I don't have a good charm to use, but it's not necessary to make the build work. The second key quest you can do is the Rathalos. That's because we want to craft its coil, which later in the game we will swap for the Tsushis one. After completing two key quests, you will unlock the Urchet quest which is not other than Astros, the monster from Generations. At the same time, you will also unlock the Harvest Moon and the Tempered Spirit Blade, the last two switch skills of Longsword. Although these new switch skills aren't that important for most of the players, against some specific monsters they can have some uses. The Tempered Spirit Blade will either replace the Helmbreaker or the Sakura Slash, while the Harvest Moon shares the same slot as the Serene Pose. The Tempered Spirit Blade can help you level up the Spirit Gauge level faster, but it doesn't deal high damage, while the Harvest Moon is a circle inside which the Hunter gets extra damage ticks on all the counters and have infinite spirit gauge. However, it is extremely limiting, which means you need to play flawlessly to correctly utilize this switch skill. On top of that, it is absolutely not recommended for multiplayer. Anyway, beating the urgent quest of Astalos will unlock other mastering for quests. Right at this point, you will also unlock a new request from Nagi, which simply consists of getting 3 bodies with a skill memory of 8 slots. You do that by using Eureka Corns, which can be found in the Kuhut Nest or via Meow Scenaris for example. Completing this request will unlock a new feature at the Body Dojo, Body Skill Lesson. You can now swap the current body skill of your body with others. After completing 2 other key quests, you will unlock another urgent quest, Espinas, the Monster Hunter Frontier Monster. Overcome it and you will finally unlock the last remaining Master Rank 4 quests. At this point, there are two important things you also unlocked. The first one is the new sleep weapons for your bodies. Remember the heavy humble scrap I recommended you get from the Meow Scenaries? Now it's time to use it by crafting these weapons. These are the best sleep weapons for your bodies in the game. Secondly, you will unlock another request from Nagi to be able to swap the third support move as well and further improve your polygon. You can easily complete this request by doing the Pirantula or Rachnoid quest in Master Rank 4. As for the key quest, I'd recommend completing the Pyre Rachna Kadaki, the new subspecies of Rachna. Indeed, the chest armor of this monster is particularly good given the Warbuck Whisperer level 2, with 2 slots level 2 and 1 level 1. Make sure to craft it when you get all the materials. But since we will exceed the max level of Warbuck Whisperer by equipping this new piece, now it's the right time to swap the Utsushi Coil with the Rattalos one. Don't forget to do that. Currently, this is the build I'm using. This time, I'm using my Quick Sheath level 2 Talisman, so I could swap the Sheath Jewels with Critical Boost and gain more offensive power. The second key quest you might consider completing is Tigrex. Its longsword can get quite powerful if you have a set with high affinity to make up for that minus 20%. After completing two key quests, you will unlock the Urchin quest. This time, it's not gonna be that easy, as you have to face the new Elder Dragon from Sunbreak, Malzino. The best strategy to hunt this monster would be to use a Dragon Longsword with a lot of element. However, at this point of the game, the only decent Dragon Longsword would be Gore Magala, but it has too low Dragon element, so it's not that great. You will need to bury it with the Shogun Longsword, or if you want, T-Rex can also be fine. This monster doesn't have big weak points for raw damage, but when he transforms its forelegs and head become weaker, so that's your big chance to deal some good damage. If you've managed to deal enough damage during this phase, you will eventually get a topple and saw a long opening to exploit. Don't forget to use the anti-aerial species jewel on the rampage slot of your weapon. Completing Malzino's urgent quest will unlock Master Rank 5 quest. Moreover, a new request from Nagi will be available. Capture a Master Rank Rajang and you will be able to swap the 4th support move of your Palico. 
At the same time, you will also be able to send your buddies in the lava caverns via the Meowcenaries. In this locale, they can give you a material called Flounce Jelly, which is necessary to craft the best Paralysis Buddy weapon. Now head to Kamura and accept the quest from Fugen. By completing this follower quest, you will unlock a new longsword tree, which is the Royal Order Tree. This longsword is great at this point of the game. It has natural purple sharpness and 10% affinity with 1 slot level 2 and plus 50 defense. Royal Order Certificate 3 can be obtained from the Master Rank 5 Follower Collab quest. To complete Nagi's request and forge the Royal Order 3 longsword, you can do the Rajang and the Basil Kiss key quest. Basil materials are also necessary to craft its longsword, which is quite powerful. Another great longsword you can forge right away is the upgraded version of the Lunagron longsword. But if you want to have more element in exchange for some sharpness, you should craft the Bloom Snow Slash Plus from Aurora Cant Tree. For the water element, I recommend the Deathbringer Blade Plus. Later, we will also be able to craft other longswords with other high elemental values. After you complete two key quests, a new urgent quest will be unlocked. This time it is Shagaru Magala from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Slate is Elder Dragon and you will unlock more Master Rank 5 quests. If you talk to Fiorain, she will give you a request to unlock the Camera Inheritance Blast. You need to use and Kushala's materials, and that's why the next key quest we should complete are Toes. What's more, their materials are also needed for some good longsword like the Magma Disaster Plus, the longsword with the highest fire element, and the Teostra longsword, which is the longsword with the highest plus value. Completing two key quests will unlock the urgent quest, which will be again Lunagaron, but spoiler! It's actually not a normal Lunagaron. Well, go fight him and you will see what I mean. At this point of the game, you will unlock a cutscene featuring the final boss of the game. If you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch any further. During this cutscene, you get to know Geismagorn, the final boss of the story. The Admiral and his team will successfully manage to repel this creature, but of course, the one who will kill it will be you. And that's the urgent quest you will take on right after this cutscene. I do have some tips to give you before the actual fight starts. Starting from the gear, which is exactly the armor I showed you at the end of Master Rank 4, the only thing that changes is the weapon. I suggest going with Teostra Longsword. The blast explosions deal a good amount of damage, and overall the longsword has pretty good attack and slots. Talking of which, no anti-species jewel works against the final boss, so the only jewel that makes sense to use in our case is the Teostra Soul Jewel, which increases the blast explosions by 10%. Regarding the switch skill, I recommend having the same ones for both red and blue scrolls. But in the first one use Tempered Spirit Blade, while in the second one Sakura Slash. As for the skills in your armor, you should use the level 1 slots for the Bombardier skill. That's because we will make use of bombs during this fight, specifically to get some easy part breaks on the legs and gain decisive openings during the hunt. This is why I highly recommend eating for Dango Pyro, which massively boosts the damage of your Large Barrel Bomb and Large Barrel Bomb Plus. You can eat for Dango Moxie and Specialist for the other two Dango. Don't forget to bring all the bombs and the combinations for them in your pouch. And make sure to set up your radial menu to quickly combine the bombs and use other items. Also, you should bring a Firecaster with you. If you need to restock or simply are in a dangerous situation, you can always go back to the camp. Don't forget it. Well, and that's it for my tips. If you want to know how to actually fight this beast using the longsword, I made a video where I hunt him naked with only quick shift 3. There you can see how to counter its attacks, how to exploit the openings, and more in general how to deal with it. Link in the description. Oh, and one more thing. When it climbs the wall the first time, there is no way to make it fall down. You can only destroy two of the Kuro orbs back on its back. He has to perform that Nova the first time, it's a scripted attack. After beating Geismagorm, the Master Rank cap gets removed. Moreover, you will unlock new melding options, melding anima and reincarnation. Both are completely RNG unfortunately, like the other melding options. Do not spend materials and items on these meldings. You will soon unlock the latest and most efficient melding to snipe talismans, just wait a bit longer. You will also unlock a new locale for the Mia scenarios called Curio Probes. This will randomly appear every now and then, it is not fixed like the other locales. Your buddies can gather lots of monsters' materials from these Kuro hunts, so you might be interested in sending them there when you have the chance. Lastly, you will unlock the Master Rank 6 quest, but no new monsters will be there. You need to get to Master Rank 10 to hunt the new monsters Capcom introduced via the title updates for the Nintendo Switch and the Steam versions. 
Reaching Master Rank 10 is extremely important as you can unlock the new urgent quests featuring the new monsters, among which there is Afflicted Arzuros. Beating him will unlock the Anomaly Quest and Investigation System, basically the true endgame of Sunbreak. You will get a research level that you can raise by completing Anomaly Investigations. These special quests feature Afflicted Monsters, whose materials are essential to further upgrade most of the weapons and to craft new decorations. On top of that, after completing your first Anomaly Investigation, you will unlock the Curious Crafting. By using specific materials dropped in the normal investigations together with afflicted materials, you can augment your weapon and your armor. Anomaly investigations and query crafting are the core of Sunbreak's endgame. The higher your search level, the more afflicted monsters you will get to fight, and the more stuff you will unlock. Once again, if you want to know which afflicted monster drops a specific material, here's an image with all the information. Credits to Gaudium, link in the description. Before investing all of your time in farming anomaly investigations and grinding the hell out of Cure Crafting, you should consider completing the urgent quest of Chaotic or Magala right away. In fact, after beating this monster, you will unlock the best talisman melding that guarantees the skill you choose, the Aurora melding. This is by far the easiest and most efficient way to farm talismans, and you should most definitely make use of it to find good talismans. Now it's the perfect time to use all the melding, padding and MP accelerant you farmed via the Argosy. With the Aurora melding, getting an attack boost 3 with a level 2 slot is extremely easy for example. I literally got this first try. Completing the urgent quest will either unlock new monsters, like Gold Rathian and Silver Rattalos, or will unlock new urgent quests once you reach a specific master rank. Starting from master rank 110, you will unlock the new Reason Elder Dragons. At Master Rank 110 will be Reason Camellios, at Master Rank 120 Reason Kushala, and at Master Rank 130 Reason Teostra. However, already at Master Rank 10 you can join these quests in case somebody else is posting them, so you can already start farming the Reason Elders if you know somebody that unlocked them. It's obvious to say that the armors you can craft from these Reason Elder Dragons are currently the best in the game, but unfortunately no weapons can be crafted from them. If you want to know more about the builds you can craft with the new monsters, I have two videos on my channel where I talk about my best builds for Longsword in Title Update 2 and 3. Capcom already said that Sunbreak version for PlayStation and Xbox will stop at Title Update 3, so you will need to wait for Title Updates 4 and 5. Well, you have plenty of stuff to farm until then, so it's not a big deal in my opinion. And with that being said, the video ends here. I hope this walkthrough was helpful. In that case, please consider subscribing. As always, if you have any questions, or you just want to give me some feedback, feel free to write in the comments. Thank you for watching, and see you in another video, bye!